Hi again, everyone. Thanks for joining our animal care session. I'll shortly pass you over to the animal care team. That's Jane, Deb, Emily and Rachel, who are going to talk to you about the wonderful animal care course that we offer at the Manchester College. If you do have any questions at any point, you can ask them in the live Q&A box, which is just right to the, uh, to the right of your screen. I'll now pass you over to Jane, who is the department team leader, to get the session started. Hopefully you can hear me, Jane. No, I don't think she can. Rachel, do you want to start? OK, <clears throat> OK, we welcome you to the animal care at the Manchester College. Uh, we've got a wide range of varied animals on site, including domestic and exotic animals. Um, and we'll also give you the skills that will take you to work within the animal care industry and develop and build upon those skills. This will also prepare you for employment into the animal care uh, sector. At our Animal Centre, there are a range of specialist tutors and animal technicians that are on hand to be able to help you and we will be able to give you a great start into your career uh, with animal care. At the college, we also offer a variety of rewards and facilities on site. These include student ID card, free bus pass and travel card, student union facilities, supported learning to help you through your course, careers and welfare advice, and also assistance with work placements and employability. At the Manchester College, we offer levels one, two and three. All of these uh, courses also include work experience, trips dependent on which modules you study and also an employability session which will help to equip you with the skills required in the workplace. This is an introduction from our departmental manager. Rachel, can you pop the sound up? Um, oh. Sorry, it's going off. It's OK. Just might need to try that again. I'll have to come out to put the sound up. OK, that's fine. Let's see. If you want to share your screen again, that's fine. OK, so our level one course is um, our uh, introductory to animal care. You will develop a wide range of skills and also a lot of practical skills within this uh, course. It also includes um, using our geodome, which is based at our Withenshaw campus, where you will also be able to develop your skills with uh, vegetable cultivation and also plants. It also gives you the experience of being able to work outdoors and use the classroom facilities on this site. The modules that you will study include animal handling, so you will be able to handle and learn the skills to handle a range of different animals from uh, rabbits through to rats and also guinea pigs. You will also look at animal accommodation and suitability and cleaning out, and you will also be able to develop your skills to be able to health check a wide range of animals. Um, the main part of the course will also look at safety within the workplace. So this will also look at safety signs and understanding what risks might be involved in handling those animals. Level two combines a mixture of practical and both written uh, assignments. Um, it is a mixture of both and it will also develop your skills to work with a variety of animals. 
The modules that we cover will look at feeding, which looks at the nutrients and how important they are and what food is required for each animal. You will also look at the accommodation needs, uh, what is suitable, how to clean out and how to uh, maintain those animal accommodations while working on the unit. You will also look at the needs of welfare of animals, understanding how to carry out health checks, and also looking at the behaviour of animals, which develops those skills to be able to handle the animals and to know when not to handle those animals. Level three is a two year course and this builds upon your skills gained from the level two. It will help you to advance your practical skills with a, a wider range of uh, different species that we have on the Animal Centre. So you will work with uh, the exotic species and develop skills in be able, being able to maintain the husbandry and also the health checks. One of the units you will study will be exotic animal husbandry, which will enable you to be able to identify signs of ill health and also to be able to set up and develop accommodations for those species. You will also look at zoo health and be able to go on uh, trips to, the, to a variety of zoos to be able to look at enclosure design and suitability of different animals. You will also study animal nutrition, which looks at the biology uh, and the components of what makes up the nutrients and which nutrients are uh, better for each animal. This will also include looking at the different types of foods and which are most suitable for each animal. Your role in the animal unit will include looking at the skills that you will learn. So once a week, there will be a session that will involve a practical session, which allows you to be able to develop these skills, which will help you to go on to industry standards. You will look at animal husbandry skills, animal handling, Developing and recognising animal behaviour, so as discussed before, knowing which, when to handle and when not to handle, and signs of aggression and how to deal with those. You'll also build skills into be able to groom the variety of animals, and again, develop your skills to be able to recognise signs of health and ill health. This will include completing health check forms, which is part of the animal unit to ensure that animals are protected and that, they are, that we follow the Animal Welfare Act. You will, learn to learn, you will learn to work as a team along with recognising how to follow animal legislation and this will all build in within your practical skills. We're now going to look at some of the areas that you might be involved in. Rachel, there's there's no sound coming out, unfortunately. Is there not? I can hear it. Do you want to to share the the desktop again, and then um, we can play the video? Sorry. It's all right. and welcome back to Manchester College. I thought you, I'd introduce you today to one of the less uh, glamorous tasks that have to be done. You can see here the uh, font that we have for our therapies and on a regular interval we need to clean because they're not the cleanest of animals. So what we're doing at the moment to make life a little easier for us and for anyone that's doing it is we're using the filter that they've got as a system to fill up buckets and as we fill up those buckets, we have them down the drain. This will ensure that it's less uh, manual labour on ourselves, reduce the risk of injury, but also makes the job faster. When we've done that, the task is to remove any waste any, and wipe down the sides with a strong disinfectant. All whilst we're doing this, our friends uh, stay safely in a warm water container whilst, whilst they get clean. 
they get to have a bit of an explore and a bit of a new ex new experience whilst we're working our butts off to clean their enclosure. All right, I'll put you back in. This is probably one of the tasks that most students will have to get involved in doing, but it's not going to be the most frequent. We're not going to expect we're not going to be expecting you to be cleaning out this enclosure every week. They, because they're quite hardy animals and they've lived in the UK as well as an invasive species, the water conditions that they can live in can be quite tough. They can ha hazard it out. However, it is only fair on them that we give them a nice clean enclosure. Bet you can't wait to have to deal with this, so hopefully we'll see you again soon. Work experience. Work experience. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Hi, Deb, yeah. we can hear you. Hi, yeah. So for work experience, we currently have students out at some of the riding stables near to the college in veterinary practices working alongside vet nurses. We have students that go out to dog groomers and um, help with bathing, brushing and learning to clip all the different styles there. We've had students go to Blue Planet Aquarium where they have been aquarists and helped feed and care for the different animals as well as to Lime Park. It is a mandatory part of a level two and three qualification in animal studies. If you do level two, you need to do 150 hours of work experience, whereas for level three, it's 300 hours and that's done over the two years of the course. We do have a dedicated team here at the college to help you find your work experience placement, but it might be really useful for you to have a little look and see if anything that is useful or interesting to you in your local area to help them out. And then we'll find you somewhere that would be suitable. Once we have agreed somewhere suitable, we'll make sure that it's fully health and safety checked before you start as well. The the basis of the work experience is to give you practical experience building your skills that you've learned here with us at college and getting you ready to go into the industry as well as something really good to put on your CV that will help you get your career off to a flying start. Um, it'll help give you development in your knowledge, hands-on experience, let you have a little bit of a taste, if you like, of the career that you've decided to do. And it might also help you down that career path along the way. Many of our students do secure full time employment after their studies with their work experience placements as well. Um, and some of them even go on to work in them industries through the links that they've made. So work experience is really important and makes up a really big part of your course here at the college. Next slide, Rach. Employability. So for employability, um, we basically have set sessions here at the college where we help you prepare for your future career by taking on a range of employability activities. It will be things like creating your CV, reading job descriptions and a vast range of other things in which will help you. The activities focus on you getting ready for that work experience placement that we talked about a second ago and you will have a dedicated tutor that will make sure any questions and queries are answered throughout your time here at the college. Um, some of the animal care students have gone on to work for DEFRA, they've gone to work in conservation, wildlife, some of them have gone on to be pet shop assistants or even owning their own pet shop, animal technicians, veterinary nurses, kennel assistants, dog trainers and even into things like marine biology. So there's quite a lot out there for you and the employability session will really help you to tailor what you prefer and set you on the right path.
where have some of our students gone to study? Hi, uh, my name's Jane. I'm the DTL for Animal Care here at Northenden. Um, you would have seen me on the video playing earlier. Um, just so that I can go over, our courses run up to level three and your level three course, the full level three is equivalent to three A levels. This does allow you go on to not only work going to the world of work but also study at a higher level um, many of our students have took a, a varying range of routes into vet nursing we've had students who've gone on to Reese's College to do vet nursing we've had students who've gone to Aberystwyth University to do animal behavior or some students have decided to look into marine biology that they've gone to Bangor University for and some students have stayed a little bit closer to home and gone to Manchester Met or Liverpool John Moores University. Um, progression from level three can be very varied. We can go into level four, five, six and beyond. And the routes that are available are also very varied. The courses that we run at Northern Dune do cover a range of specific areas. So you are guaranteed to find something that you really will be competent in and, and you can take into to further study. What's next? Ooh. Trips and more. So here at Northern Dune, as part of your studies, not only do you get to do practical work with our animals and you have your work experience where you'll get out to go to the, you know, real life working establishments and develop the skills that are required for employment. But also we do run trips um, and those trips are very much in line with your delivery, your curriculum delivery that takes part both in the classroom and alongside the practical sessions that you will be in, in, in able to enjoy. Those trips can be things to wildlife parks, safari parks, Chester Zoo, Blue Planet Aquarium, but also kennels or the RSPCA, stables, uh, livery yards, Alongside that, we do have professionals who actually come in and give guest sessions, guest, guest talks, speakers come in from the industries to talk to our students. And this is really, really great because it means students can ask direct the employees of places from zoos, you know, what is it like working at a zoo and you know, what, what kind of skills will I learn? What qualifications do I need? And get first hand experience from people who are doing these jobs. So again, they can get informed and help them make decisions for the future where they may want to go after they finish their course. What you will need. So for the course, you will need to wear PPE to make sure that you are work ready. We prefer that you bring yourself a boiler suit. So something like our student Maggie has on the image, which will cover you from head to toe to prevent any cross contamination and prevent you from getting dirty. Because what we expect is that students come to college with their PPE, put it on here in our changing facilities and then remove it at the end of their session just to make sure that they are not bringing in or taking home anything that they wouldn't want to. Because at some point you may get a little bit messy when you're working with animals. If you do not want to wear a boiler suit, we do have other options available and we will discuss those with you. Um, so please don't worry if you don't um, want to wear a boiler suit or if you would struggle with that. Um, please let us know and we can discuss it. But workwear is suitable, so a pair of work trousers and a work top, a polo shirt and a zip up jacket that can be taken off, something like that. With it being the UK, it might also be worth you getting a Packamac type jacket that you can put over the top when you're outside as we do not allow you to wear your everyday coat on practicals because again, that defies the point of having PPE. So please make sure that you are fully prepared and boiler suits, workwear are easily collected and not like of B&Q, um, online on Amazon, all different things. But you'll also need some appropriate shoes. So your famous 
fancy white trainers are not really going to be suitable for you being out on practical as they will get covered in mud at some point. So Wellingtons or sturdy work boots are what we prefer. And again, they need to come in with you to college to be placed on before practical and then swapped back to your everyday fancy footwear before you decide to go home. Um, padlocks for our lockers as well. We do have lockers available for you to put all of this lovely PPE in when you are here with us so that you're not having to carry it around all day. So you need to bring a padlock with you to lock those to keep your belongings secure. Today I'm doing level three animal care at Manchester College. I would recommend this course because you get to see different species of animals and you get to handle them and it's really good. That was a clip from one of our students. Meet the animals. This is Edmund. Edmund is fully grown and um, really um, amiable, no problems with him at all. We've had him five years, he came from a, a collection who were um, closing down so this is uh, Edmund. Hopefully Edmund will take. There we go. And that is Edmund taking a, a mouse. All right. <laughs> Here's another one of our animals. Welcome back to Manchester College. I thought today I'd introduce you to one of our more unique individuals. This is Penelope. Penelope is an African bullfrog. And as you can guess by the name, she's found in Africa. Their main diet is consists of insects, rodents, lizards, birds, pretty much anything they can get their mouth around. And looking at the size of her, that's a lot of things. Normally, they live in the more wetter regions. However, when, oh, yep, when times get a bit dry, like they're prone to, African bullfrogs have a unique ability where they will go into a state similar to hibernation, where she can go to sleep and become dormant for up to a year at a time. To, this is to help her conserve water and it's what we're trying to make sure she's not doing now as it's getting warmer because she just wants to go to sleep. Meet the animals, another one of our technicians with another of our species. Hello, I'm Craig from the Manchester College here. And as you can see, this is Casper. He is our Kawati. So what's special about Kawatis are they are a lot like uh, raccoons in themselves. They're very good at climbing. He's an omnivore. And if you look at him eating now, he's having his special treat. He's having mixed up eggs with mealworms. Normally, with his friend Milo behind him, they have a mixed diet of fruit, veg, uh, meat, anything that they can get their hands on. The interesting fact that you may notice with Milo if you ever come to see him is he's a bit unsteady on his feet. Milo has something called wobbly kitten syndrome, where he was born with a condition where his brain is not fully developed. So as he walks, he's a bit unsteady on himself and he may fall over. However, it still doesn't stop him getting into mischief. He likes to The animal unit. So here on the animal unit, we're just going to go through a few of the things that you will be doing when you're here on the course. So 
part of your course, you will take on the responsibilities of the day-to-day -day care of our animals. So we will have you doing things like feeding, watering our animals, um, spot cleans, full cleans, daily health checks. There'll be times when you may be grooming our animals, and that includes on the occasion bathing them. We also have um, nail clippings that need to be done, as well as weighing. So everything that our technicians do is exactly what we're going to be expecting of you guys. So you're going to be basically our mini technicians, and you guys are going to help out with the day-to-day -day responsibilities and cares. You may be doing some animal training along the way, so you may be learning how to train our rats or even our chickens. And there's some really fun things that you guys can do with that. You're going to explore a wide range of the animals' habitats because one thing that we like to do is try to mimic that within our enclosures. And you guys will be coming up with ideas on how to change those enclosures to enrich the animals' lives throughout. And it's not just domestic animals that we have here. In the video you've just seen with Craig, one of our instructors, we have some pretty rare and unusual animals as well. So you've seen Craig there was with our Kwati and our raccoon. They are not domestic. They're not going to come for a sit on your knee and a cuddle like our rats and our mice might do. But they are going to allow you to work with them, do some training, and you're still going to have to carry out those basic husbandry routines with them. So here we've got a video of Jack, and he's going to introduce you to our raccoon dogs. And I'm here at Manchester College. I'm one of the technicians here, um, and one of our jobs is to uh, feed the animals. Um, so I'm here with the tanukis, um, commonly known as the raccoon dogs. Um, I've got a bit of an assortment for them today, so they've got mainly veggies uh, and the broccoli and some raw eggs. Um, they absolutely love the broccoli at the moment, anything crunchy. Um, these are what the students are going to be working with, uh, and they are known for being quite challenging. Uh, you've got to kind of keep your wits about you when you're working with them. Um, I'm going to give them the food now, and then we're going to see if we can take some of the fur off. You can see that they're all looking like they need a good brush. So I'm going to distract them with the food, and then hopefully just give them a, a good brush. Put that there. I've obviously got a glove with me as well, because they do have a really bad bite. They've got really big canine teeth, so you've got to be really careful. Um, so we just like to use the food to distract them and we're just going to try and rake out all this fur. <clears throat> um, again, it's just one of the more challenging animals that you get to work with um, and it's something a little bit different. Uh, these guys are actually an invasive species and they originally come from Japan, um, but you do find them in places like Asia. Um, they are banned to keep as pets in a lot of places, so you can't keep them in the US. Uh, they're completely banned. Um, and they are in the UK as well. You need to have specialist licenses to keep them. Um, but yeah, so this is just one of the one of the daily chores that we have to do here at the college. So that was Jack, and Jack was there with our raccoon dogs, like you said, better known as Tanukis, and he's just showing you a little bit of what we do with those animals. So like we said before, you'll be doing grooming, you'll be doing feeding and cleaning, and Jack was in there doing some grooming with the raccoon dogs, which is something that's really important for us to do. Helps make sure that we remove their fur and keeping them nice and healthy. What help will you get when you're here? We are very welcoming and supportive here at the college. All of the tutors have a passion for animal care, so we are here to help you get to the, the goal of the career that you want. Um, and that could be within wildlife, it could be within the animal industry for a vet nurse, you may want to go and own your own pet shop in the future, or you might actually want to help working in the environment in something like environmental conservation. Each member of the department has their own individual knowledge and experience, so when we all come together, there's pretty much nothing that we can't cover with you. And that wealth of experience will help you in learning all about the animals here at the college that we have and the animals in the wider field that we've got as well. So I think we're going to move on to some question and answer next. So some of the questions that you guys may have had for us. 
Hiya, thank you Deb, thank you Rachel and to you Jane. Um, I'm not sure whether or not we're going to be able to go live to, to Northern Dun. Um, I can't see on my camera whether or not we can we can see anybody or not. I think it's frozen. So if we just go straight on to the questions, we've had quite a lot of questions which have come through, which has been brilliant. Um, so um, one, uh, the first question is, how much time will I spend with the animals? Not sure who wants to answer that one. So that will depend on which course you're on. Level one is a more practical based course um, than obviously level two or level three. So if you're on level one, you may spend more time doing practicals, whereas obviously on level three, those practical skills will be more specific. But every student will have a set amount of time allocated to them where they are on the unit and that's when they will be undertaking their unit duties. That's lovely. Thank you, Deb. Um, somebody, I know we've seen some of the animals sort of on the on the video clips, um, but somebody said, what animals will I work with? Are there other animals, obviously, within the animal care unit that we've not seen on the video? Yeah, we do. We have some waiting for you. So once we come out of the presentation, um, we've got one of our technicians, Jack, waiting with a couple of animals to show you. But some of the other animals that we have here is we have lots of small rodents, so hamsters, mice, rats, We've even got some really cute little harvest mice. We've got chipmunks, rabbits, guinea pigs. They're moving into our exotics room. We do have different reptiles. Um, we have a number of different types of snakes. We've got leopard geckos, bearded dragons, going into terrapins and tortoises, um, different amphibians, lots of different inverts. And obviously we do have the more rare animals outside, such as the raccoon, the raccoon dogs, tanukis, and then on top of that, we also have some birds, some fish, we've got chickens and all sorts. So we do have a number of animals here for you to be working with. That's lovely, thank you. Um, there's a couple of um, questions about the about the course levels. Um, somebody said if they went into onto level one, um, but due to not having any GCSEs, would you thought the course level was too easy, or would you put would you put somebody up another level if you felt it was too easy for them? So. We would put them onto the level one as it goes, but within the first couple of weeks, we do have a probation period where all students are assessed. As those students are assessed, we will then make judgments on whether we would move them up to level two or they would remain on the level one qualification. It's a very personalised, and individualised thing and they will be assessed and it will be discussed between uh, the tutors, the department team leader, the students, obviously parents, to make sure that we get them on the right course and their attendance within those first couple of weeks will be really really important to help us decide what is the best route because we prefer to make sure our students are on the right course for them and something that's going to be suitable to them something they're going to achieve to make sure that they're completing work to their deadlines so it all comes into one to make sure that you're in the right place because at the end of the day that's what we want for you Brilliant, thank you. Um, and, some, and somebody, it just leads on to another one. So someone said, do they have to complete level two before you can go on to level three? No, so there's different qualifications uh, levels and each course has its own entry requirements. So if you were coming with the entry requirements to a level three, that is where we would put you. Um, if you came on to the level two qualification, we would expect those students who wanting to progress onto the level three to have high levels of attendance, to hand in that work on time, to make sure that they're getting merit as sort of a minimum within the level two qualification that they're working to that maths and English um, GCSE grade four to be able to, to meet the sort of agreed level three entry requirements. That's brilliant, thank you. Um, there's, uh, somebody else has asked something about um, level three. So for level three, how many days will somebody be in college for? Um, and how many will be how many days will be studying remotely? We've had a, a few questions just about whether or not we, you'd be studying um, online or if it's going to be sort of practical, or if it's going to be a mixture of, of both. So, there's, yeah, there's a, there's a mixture of both. So there'll be practical and theories throughout. 
the timetables made up of your animal studies and any maths and English that is required as well. So the days that you come into college will vary depending upon what is required by the individual learner. Um, generally, we do have students in for as full days as we can, but that will include the employability session, it will include their tutorial session, their maths, their English should they require to do them, their practical session and the theory. So the number of days that they're in may differ depending on their actual individual needs for maths and English as well. OK, that's brilliant. And um, somebody just said, how will I prepare for my course in my time off during lockdown? So we would advise that you look around the area for potential work experience places so that you've got a good idea of what's available to you before you come to us and um, make sure that you're getting your PPE prepared so that you've got everything you need and we also have a Twitter account um, if you have a little look if you're on Twitter at TMC um, we've got an animal care course on there and we publish lots of information we post up in things that are important updates of our animals so you could keep an eye on that get to know some of the animals and especially some of the technicians because they've been doing some pretty great films we've been publishing on there um, and we are at care tmc Brilliant, that's fine. We'll pop that in the um, in the Q&A box for everybody as well. Um, somebody has asked, a, a, there's been a couple of questions about work experience. Um, I know you just, you just said for people to try and get some sort of work experience. What type of work experience would they get if they, when they come onto the course? So any of the work experience has to be directly with animals. So you need to be working somewhere which has an animal facility that is risk assessed by us. So you may want to be looking at local pet shops, local dog groomers, um, any animal sitters. It has to be approved by the college before the work experience starts because we do have to do the risk assessment, which is something that our dedicated team will do for you. So it's just having a look around the area and seeing what's available, what might be within travel distance for yourself, things like that. And the better idea you have of what you would like to do, as well as what's near and available to you, the easier it is for us to help you find a placement. That was lovely, thank you. And somebody said, will they get help with work experience? Will you help secure the work experience for them? Yes, we do have a work experience um, officer who will help them secure their work experience, take all of the details from them and obviously do those risk assessments. What we do aim is that students have an idea of where they want to go within that first week of term because the quicker we can get you into a placement, the quicker we can get those um, dedicated members of staff out to risk assess them for you. And it is mandatory for our level two and three. So it's really important that you start thinking about that as soon as possible. Oh, lovely. Thank you. That brings there's another question which somebody said, actually, when do we decide what place to do work experience at. So like you say, they, they need to sort of have a have a think about it now, really, before they start in September. Yeah, so if you're a level two, you've got 150 hours that you have to complete. And if you're a level three, it's a 300 over the two years of the course. So it's quite a lot of hours that they need to do. Now, some students want to do them one day a week and we do a timetable to allow them to have time to do that. Others prefer to do little blocks sort of during their holidays and half terms so that they can get um, sort of a chunk, if you like, of work experience instead of doing it weekly. What we need is obviously them to, to think about what's best for them and get that into us sooner rather than later at the very beginning of the course so that we can get the ball rolling, get them in, and we can make sure that they actually achieve those hours by the end of the course. Brilliant, thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions about PPE. Um, do we buy PPE or do you provide the PPE? So PPE is something that the learner needs to provide um, for themselves. It's something that will belong to them that they are then responsible for as well. So they will purchase that to come into us and wear it during their practicals and they will take it away with them obviously to wash it um, and bring it back in. So it is something that they will provide. We do provide some PP things like gloves and face masks that are specific to the animals that they'll need here. But the majority of the PP has to be brought in from the learner. So the likes of the boiler suit and the sensible um, 
footwear and unfortunately because of the the health and safety implications we cannot allow learners on practical without PPE so it is something that they need to be considering and looking for over the summer. Lovely somebody asked actually do we need to just bring PPE on the days that they do practical I know you mentioned about lockers as well so if they were to bring the PPE they can just leave it in the lockers can they? Um, yeah, we do ask the students to take stuff home with them at the end of the day and to be right. washing it regularly, especially with the current situation that we're in. Hygiene is really important. Lovely. Um, somebody else has asked what regulations are being put in place uh, relating to the pandemic? So for the pandemic, um, the reg regulations pandemic for us we are quite strict on hygiene anyway so you are not allowed to enter any of our practical areas without wash your hands um, you have to wash your hands in between touching all of our animals so what we've done is we've obviously just pushed that up a little bit higher a level to make sure that our students are following the guidelines that they ha are washing their hands all the time and it's something that we always do as standard here in animal care anyway so we follow all of the government guidelines to make sure that you guys are safe, making sure you're washing your hands. And obviously we all use the veterinary grade disinfectants and things. So it's very safe and you don't have to worry. Lovely. Thank so you. All so our increased hygiene. Thank you. Um, so somebody said, how is COVID going to affect our course? Oh, did you hear me, Deb? Sorry, what was that? Oh, it's all right. Out then. <laughs> um, it's okay. We dropped off then. Um, somebody has asked, how is COVID going to affect our course? We have increased all of our hygiene and things here on the unit and that we are putting smaller practical groups in place. Um, so we're, we're following all of the government guidelines. We aren't expecting to be any major implications into the course should the current guidelines continue and the progress of, of the virus. So we aren't expecting there to be any significant um, impact on the course. Um, the animals that we have, um, we're, we're very well aware of which which animals we need to take extra precautions where we put everything in place ready for you to come in in September. Additional hygiene procedures, we've increased our disinfectant ratios. So we're not expecting there to be much impact at all, to be honest. That's brilliant, thank you. And um, somebody's asked, how are we assessed? Are there any exams? So depending on the course in which you are enrolled on, depends on how you're assessed. Our level one and two is through assignment work, whereas the new level three qualification does have some um, synoptic assessments within them and um, some, some in-house tests that go along for biology. So it's very dependent upon which course in which you go on. OK, that's brilliant. Thank you. Somebody said I walk dogs for a family and get paid and I've done that for five years. Would this be classed as work experience? Hi, sorry, Amy, it's Jane back here again. Would you mind repeating that question, please? We were just swapping over the earphones. Yes, of course. No problem. Somebody said I walk dogs for family for a family and get paid and they've done that for five years. Would that be classed as work experience? Uh, well, the thing is, uh, it's absolutely, it's, it's great experience and it's something that will definitely help with the course. However, the work experience has to be with a college approved uh, establishment so that we can carry out um, safeguarding, risk assessments and such like. So in, in as much as it will be really, really good experience, we would not, that would not be able to be counted as, as work experience. However, if it is a business, and they would be happy to have college carry out the risk assessment and they had the necessary insurance, we could then definitely look at it being used. Brilliant, thank you Jane. And um, somebody said what will the first day of animal care be like? Well, what we're hoping to, obviously with the, work, the current situation being as it is, we really, really want to have a minimum, minimum disruption really or to what we would normally do. So we're looking to do a mixture of online and face-to-face -face delivery, which is very much at the moment be, being planned for. But the, fir the first day is going to be 
getting to meet staff, mate, getting to meet the animals, getting the attack, getting timetables, and really just a, a period of settling into the college because you know coming to a college, um, a new college, can be quite a daunting experience. So the first day is really going to be getting to know your peers, make new friends, get to know where the canteen and the toilets are, meet the staff, meet the animals. Um, and what we try to do on that first day is make it a really, really enjoyable but relaxing day because we do understand and appreciate that it can be it can be quite nervous for some people and you know adults and 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 young adults coming into a, to a new place of work or study. That's brilliant. Thank you, Jane. Somebody said, what are the entry requirements for a level three? Our level three course entry requirements are uh, you need five GCSEs at grade four or above and that must include maths, English and science. Um, so our entry requirements for level three are, are, are based on that because our new RQF course is a course that is equivalent to three A levels. So there is quite a lot of theory based work in there as well, as well as the practical. Students who currently have a level two need to have achieved that level two at a minimum of a merit grade overall, but also have achieved um, three or more GCSEs at grade three or above, one of which needs to be maths or English. OK, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, somebody said if they were uncomfortable feeding mice and snakes, would they still have to do it? Um, just just they just need to understand that just in case they, they do have to do it and they have to sort of get used to doing things like that. Yeah, we would never, ever force uh, any student to do something that they were uncomfortable with. Uh, we do understand that a lot of the animals that we have, students may never ever have come across or met them before. So what we try to do is introduce unfamiliar animals or animals that they may be scared or wary of on um, just, just a very relaxed basis. And we would look to be encourage, encourage and develop that familiarity and comfort. We would never ever force a student to handle or do something that they were uncomfortable with. But what we look, would look to do is over time develop the skills and the confidence that they would be, become comfortable in doing it. Thanks, Jane. Um, somebody said, what's the um What's the class size is going to be like back in, in September time? Can you can you give an idea of what the class sizes will look like? Because of the current situation that we're all finding ourselves in with COVID-19, we have done quite considerable and in-depth um, risk assessments following all of the government guidelines. So we will at all times be adhering to the social distancing measures. So our class sizes are based upon the rooms in which they would be held. Um, in most cases, we are looking at a class size of approximately eight students um, for both practical sessions and classroom theory based sessions. They may be slightly lower than that, maybe slightly higher. It's very much dependent upon the room size and we've had quite detailed um, room capacities carried out on each room. As you, as you can imagine, some rooms yeah. are slightly bigger than others. That's brilliant, thank you. Um, somebody said, would college help if needed um, to buy uniforms as such? Um, we do not offer uh, any support in that area. In it's very much like other other areas within the college that it's it's a, a uniform is part and expected of the course. And um, what we can do is we can help you source places to buy the PPE. Um, and we can what we'll do is we'll post on our Twitter uh, places that they can look to to buy boiler suits and wellies and things. Um, but college in itself doesn't offer financial support for that. No, it's it, that is down to the students to secure for themselves. Okay, so no. they, as you put it, there is student services that finance to, that could be approached if there was any financial difficulties there. Brilliant, thank you. And um, I believe have you got some animals to show us, Jane? 
We have, but we seem to be having a little bit of a, um, our Wi-Fi seems to have, we seem to have acquired a new animal in the unit called a gremlin, I think. <laughs> and it's currently lurking in our, um, our, our, our server. So we have got one of our technicians here, Jack, who's had a rat patiently waiting to make its debut. Oh. But it's now fallen asleep, actually. Oh, hang on, um, I can see it now, actually. Your oh, screen, is it there? Um, you, your screen's come oh, on live. Hang on a sec, I'm going to go there before it freezes. <laughs> Oh, it, it doesn't it just want to see. Oh, there you go. Oh, can everybody see that? It, your screen, screen's frozen, but at least we can see Jack with the rat. <laughs> Jack's our technician. <laughs> there we go. Jack's our technician. Can you see? Do you want to give a pass, have a pass you over to Jack? Jack, if you can talk into the microphone, if I hold it close to you, and Jack That's can great. maybe give you a little introduction to who it is. Hey Jack, you, the oh, screen's yeah. slightly frozen, but uh, one more rat. I can't really hear you that well, so I'll just talk. Um, I've got one of our uh, rats here. This is Gaston. Um, he's probably coming up to about five months old now. Um, you can tell he's getting quite big. He'll probably get uh, a little bit bigger than this, um, and we're just getting used to handling him really. Uh, but your rats tend to be really nice to handle as well. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the guys we've got. And we've got. Sticky insect. Yeah. So here is one of our stick insects, as you can see. This is one of our McClave stick insects. It's female. We do have male and female here. The males are a little bit different. They're longer and thinner and they have wings. So generally what happens is the males will fly away, find new colonies, um, whereas the females will stay behind. So these very pretty, very unique. Um, for any of you like me that likes the creepy crawlies and a little bit unusual, you'll really enjoy this guy. We're going to bring in Emily next, and Emily is going to bring you in Charmander. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Emily, and this is Charmander. He is one of our bearded dragons. Um, we currently have about three dragons thing. Oh, he's four, four years old. And um, so we have <laughs> it's just just to introduce myself, I'm a brand new member of the staff. Um, so my background is um is new. Um, so sort of all of your <laughs> yeah, so my basically my background is all new animals, um, birds of prey, ungulates such as um, horses, um, giraffes and things like that. So just me saying a quick quick hello and um, welcome to uh, the Manchester College. <laughs> That's lovely, thank you. Do we have any more? I'm going to bring you Brock and Brock's going to bring you Edmund. Lovely. Just for those of people who are watching, we are the, the screen is slightly freezing, as you can probably tell. Hi guys, um, I'm Brooke and I'm an animal care technician here. And um, with me I have Edmund, he's one of our corn snakes. And we currently have six snakes at the college. Um, I think he's around five, five years old. And yeah, he's very friendly. He'd do this all day happily. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so Amy, that's some of the animals that we have here at the college. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. That's lovely. And um, we have got a few more questions which have come in. Um, are you okay to take some more questions? Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Yeah, just saying we've got a few more questions which have come in. If you're if you're OK to take some more questions. Yeah, that's absolutely yep. fine. Lovely. So some, uh, somebody said what places and it was just going back to the work experience. What places are college approved for work experience? What places are approved? Yes. Uh, we have a, a wide range. We have students who've gone to the Blue Planet Aquarium. 
Uh, some students have gone to pet shops, like small independent pet shops, or um, we have students who have gone to larger kind of pet superstores, like pets at home. Um, we've also had stables, uh, animal sanctuaries, um, RSPCA, dog groomers, riding stables, anywhere. It, there's, there's such a huge, huge range. Um, anywhere really that has, you know, the, there's a requirement to take care and look after animals in, in any way, shape or form. Um, but as I said, those those placements do have to be college approved because we do have a duty of care. Even though students are out on a work experience placement, they we do still have a duty of care to them to make sure that work the, the placement that they're attending is um is risk risk assessed and approved as being safe for them. But uh, vets, oh, I can't believe I didn't mention vets. We've also got vets as well. Um, quite a lot of our students secure placements at vets. So anywhere really that requires an animal to be curred and looked after is, is the type of establishment that, that we would um, be looking to students to be placed. Brilliant, thank you. And um, somebody's asked about um, about science grades. They said, do they need all science grades for each subject or can you say, can you have biology and chemistry or do you need all three? For the level three course, um, if students have done the triple science award, separate sciences, um, which would be a separate grade for biology, chemistry and physics, ideally we would be looking for a um, grade five, grade four across all three. However, given the nature of the course and the units that we deliver, it would be the biology that would have to be at grade four or above. If the, there was a biology grade four and say chemistry and or physics that were lower than that, that would still be accepted onto the level three course. The core science or the double award tends to be an, um, an amalgamated score across all three sciences. So that would be a grade four or above. OK, thank you, Jane. That's great. Um, there's a, a few more questions about um, the work experience, actually. Um, somebody, okay. said, uh, somebody said, is it going to be is it going to be more difficult to secure work experience um, with the challenges around COVID? Um, and then somebody else has asked, are places like Reddish Vale Farm suitable for work experience? Yes, Reddish Vale Farm is a perfect um, placement. If if a student was able to get an opportunity to do a placement there, that would be really, really good. We have had students do placements there before. With regards to the COVID-19, um, this is something that we have discussed over previous weeks because we do realise that there, there will be implications to the work experience and we are looking at ways in which to, 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 to approach and deal with those. It may well be that the places that students would go to would have additional working guidelines that the students would have to adhere to, but that is something that all, all members of the public would have to be adhering to. So it's, um, there would not be nothing specific just for, I can't imagine, but again, we would need to speak directly with the individual work placement establishment to, to, to find that out but we're not envisaging that there would be too much disruption though at this stage we, we don't know because obviously we don't know what the next couple of weeks and months are going to bring in terms of of um the situation with COVID-19. Thank you Jane. Uh, just a, a couple more questions now. Some of these I know we, we saw um some of the facilities you know on, on the videos that we saw so, somebody else has just sort of said what are the facilities like? I don't know if you want to give sort of an overview of, of what the facilities are like. Yes, of course. Well, we have, um, the, we're a self-contained unit at the back of the campus based at Northern Dun. Uh, we're quite fortunate that we do have quite an extensive outdoor area as well as our indoor areas. We have a reptile and amphibian room and then we have next door our small mammal room. Outside, we have our outside enclosures. Um, we have outside, we have chickens, we have coatis, raccoon dogs, ferrets, um, African civets. How can I forget the African civets? They're our newest uh, arrivals and they're all in outdoor areas. 
We do also still have some space that we're looking at to develop for, especially for our level one land based, where we're going to look at putting some um, raised beds so that we can look at growing some of our own food for our animals. But we do still have enclosure space um, for other animals that we would be looking to, to get into the unit. Oh, sorry, we also have three classrooms as well. We have three classrooms that are just animal care classrooms and we do have a specialised uh, science lab for the teaching of the biology units as well. That was brilliant, Jane. Thank you. Um, just like I say, a couple more questions now. Just somebody said, what jobs can I go into after the course? Oh, wow. It's, there's, there's so much variety in terms of jobs. It can be anything from a dog groomer to an animal behaviourist, uh, working in conservation, zookeeper, ranger, vet nurse. We have students that go off to study conservation and wildlife. It's, it's a huge, huge um, industry sector that quite often people aren't fully aware of until they come and do the course and they get to meet some of our guest speakers and speak to some of our staff. We're really fortunate that a lot of the staff uh, that we have in the unit, technicians and tutors, have got an awful lot of experience in industry and have got quite a lot of um, industry background and are able to point students in areas and directions they may not have ever considered before. We do get students who come to us who have an idea in their head that they want to do, you know, have, go on and follow a certain career pathway. Uh, such as vet nursing or be a zookeeper and then at the end of the course they have discovered they have a passion for our reptiles so then they, they want to go in and, and look at a completely different area and study something that they never thought they would. So there's a huge range of job opportunities out there from working with um, dogs, dog grooming, dog walking, uh, animal uh, canine hydrotherapy, uh, there's just a huge, huge range and what we'll try to do is make as many of these options and opportunities available to the students throughout the time with us so that, you know, they can really make a, an informed decision of, of where they would like the next, the next career pathway to take them really when they leave us. That's lovely, thank you. Um, somebody said, will we get our own desk and space to store our things? I know you talked about lockers before, um, what about the workspace? Uh, we, you, you won't so much as get your own desk because the classrooms are just like in, a, in every classroom in, in every school college. The, the classrooms have different group, groups coming into them at different times of the day, so they wouldn't be in the same classroom all day for every lesson. Um, you, there are locker facilities for students to have a locker, so they would have their own space that way, but not so much a desk in a classroom. Um, but what I would say is due to the current COVID-19, um, all our classrooms before and after every entry by students and staff are clean, cleaned beforehand. That's brilliant. Thank you, Jane. And then the last question is, what should we bring on our first day? A smile, a big <laughs> smile on your first day, bring a big smile. Yeah, that's all we want to see because we do understand that that first day can be really, really daunting. So all I would say is a smile and a pen, please. <laughs> a <laughs> pen. But if there was anything you wanted to get, you know, get a file, a folder, notebooks, things like that, because college is very different to school, but in a lot of ways, it's still that readiness to learn, really. And we just ask that students arrive ready to learn and everything that goes with that. So a pen your notepad, file and a big smile and just 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 a willingness to just relax and enjoy the day really. But if what we do have, as I said, our Twitter account at CurtiMC, we will be posting things on there throughout the summer and reminders of things that students can bring with them on that first day. That's brilliant. Thank you. Well, that, that's come to the end of our, our Q&A now, but just wanted to say a big thank you to you guys and also to the animals. And I think we managed to, um, there were some areas that were frozen, but I think we managed to get away with it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Really yeah, we seem to have required a new gremlin in our facility today that's just been playing havoc with our Wi-Fi. But um, yeah, so apologies to all those who've been watching and had to be a little bit frustrated with that. So we do hope that you've got something from it.
Yeah, definitely. Um, but thank you so much. And I mean, the animals are very well behaved. Yeah, <laughs> apart from the gremlin. <laughs> apart from the gremlin. Um, but just um, to everybody, that you can, that we've got more Couch to College sessions um, next week, just with sort of student experience and careers and welfare and some other sort of employability sessions as well going on. So if you go onto our TMC website, you'll be able to, to book onto additional sessions as well. But um, thanks again to everybody from the animal care team and we'll see you soon. Thank you and see everybody soon. Have a lovely summer.